As you walk through the Tyler History Center's People of the Mahoning Valley exhibit, some early names begin to stand out, and many of them can still be seen throughout the city today. As we go further into the 19th century, people start settling in, uh, opening businesses, uh, opening farms. Today we learn about two influential families in the area and the immigrants who came here for a better life. Flashback is sponsored by Hickey Metal Fabrication. It's hard to imagine now that the city of Youngstown used to be mostly farmland, says Bill Lawson, executive director of the Mahoning Valley Historical Society. Early on, what's now downtown Youngstown was the Central Village. The plat maps, uh, the street locations were all done in the late 18th century. Some of the names still survive uh, from those streets as they were named by John Young. Bordering the campus of Youngstown State University are Rain and Wick Avenues, named for some of the most influential people of Youngstown's past. William Rain who came to Youngstown in 1800, along with building a fine house in the 1820s, he had a store and he had land that he farmed uh, north of his property and, and his property was all located right on West Federal Street or what's now called uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard, right at the site of number one fire station here in downtown. As one of the more prosperous individuals in Youngstown, William Rand could afford the finer things in life like this travel kit and these spectacles. Rayan passed in 1854, and his estate was used for the establishment of Youngstown's first public high school. The Rayan School was opened in 1866 and still stands on Wick Avenue to this day. Along that same line, Henry Wick, who first came here to Youngstown from uh, Washington County, Pennsylvania in 1802 and brought his family here in 1804. These larger artifacts that you see in here, this fireplace mantle, uh, the arch, uh, were from a house that he built on East Federal Street. And underneath the portrait of uh, Henry Wick is a photograph of that house taken about 1870 while it was still standing. This late 18th century federal style chest of drawers was also a possession of the Wicks, which they brought with them from Washington County. It survived through their heirs up until when uh, Olive Arms gave her house which is now the Arms Family Museum, to the Mahoning Valley Historical Society, and, and that was part of her household. After moving to Youngstown with four children, Henry and Hannah Wick would have eight more, and those descendants would have a hand in the growth of the city throughout the years. Like most cities and, and communities that grew up here in the United States, from the 18th century through today, uh, it's, it's all part of a migration of people. The earliest immigrants were from England, uh, Wales, Ireland. You had a very large German migration, a very large migration of Irish people coming here in the 1840s. And then also you had other people who were born here in the United States and up until 1865 were not free to migrate. After the end of the Civil War and the emancipation of the slaves, you started to see some African Americans coming from the South. And this case tells individual stories. Stories like that of Michael McGovern, who came from Ireland to work in the iron mills. But he was also a poet and was named the Puddler Poet because most of his poetry dealt with labor and longing for Ireland and, and also life here in the United States. There's also the story of Welsh bone setter John Rees. He was also a puddler, but he had a special skill called bone setting. He helped to heal people that were injured at work or had congenital problems or also famous athletes came to Youngstown to be treated by him because he was the only one that could help them. Oscar Boggess and Lemuel Stewart came to Youngstown as emancipated slaves. Both Boggess and Stewart were stonemasons and worked in the building trades in Youngstown after the Civil War. Here we see a photo of a fireplace built by Stewart. Came here seeking work and was a partner of P. Ross Berry in, in contracting and, and building a lot of the most well-known and uh, historic buildings of the 19th century. Be sure to watch next Friday's Daily Buzz for our final segment in the series where we'll learn about the rise of industry and the small businesses that supported it.